welcome to class in continuation to what we have already been doing about talking about uh, pillars of modern social linguistics who shaped the disciplines uh, among them a very significant name is suzanne moore irwin trip so we are going to talk about suzanne irwin trip today in our lecture see the reason for bringing her in this galaxy of scholars who shaped the discipline is her original and major contribution in understanding language development among child among children uh, language uh, linguistic forms their usages patterns of usages and uh, development stages linguistic development stages of uh, children bilingual children to be precise she is also credited for uh, you know contributing in understanding the complex notions of coordinate bilingualism and compound bilingualism she herself worked on her phd thesis on verbal behavior of bilinguals french children in united states apart from that she she worked in various disciplines i mean various areas and major themes like you know social linguistics psycholinguistics ethnolinguistics gender issues and uh, a very significant contribution in pragmatics and understanding of language so her major contribution path breaking research and also she was one who brought new technology and techniques of researching in the field uh, back in 1950s and 60s so suzanne irwin trip has been a significant contributor and a very solid important pillar in shaping the discipline of social linguistics and it's important to bring her in this fold so today we are going to talk about suzanne irwin trip uh suzanne irwin trip was born in 1927 uh her research in psycholinguistics and social linguistics focused on relation between language use and the development of linguistic forms especially the developmental changes and the structure of interpretation inter interpersonal talk among children if you look at her illustrious journey full of accomplishment i will just mention a few milestones in her journey as a linguist as a psychologist as a social linguist and as a person in pragmatics suzanne was born on june 29th 1927 in minneapolis minnesota a founding leader in the field of psycholinguistics and social linguistics she died on november 13th 2018 at the age of 91 in oakland california after graduating from vassar in 1949 in art history she began her doctoral studies in social psychology at the university of michigan earning her phd degree in 1955 in her phd she worked on the verbal behavior of bilinguals the effect of language of report upon the thematic appreciation test storage of adult french bilinguals in 1958 she was offered a visiting assistant professorship at university of california berkeley and drove there alone from cambridge massachusetts in rambler con convertible camping in fields and abandoned farmhouses along the way during her research in 1975 erwin trip secured a faculty position in the psychology department where she focused on early language development in mono and bilingual children her major research focused 
on child language acquisition and bilingual uh, linguals among children. Uh, she made deep impact to the field of linguistics, psychology, child development, sociology, anthropology, rhetoric, and women's studies. She was a doctoral advisor of Daniel Kahneman, who was a Nobel laureate who be who won Nobel Prize in 2002. If you look at her major research, beginning with her doctoral research on French English bilinguals and continuing with a study of Japanese war brides, Erwin Tripp revealed differences in values and orientation within a single individual depending on the language being spoken. Her early child language research focused on acquisition of phonology and grammar, again comparing children learning different types of languages. In 1950s, she pioneered in tape recording children's interaction with parents in their homes, transcribing and coding speech for computer-aided analysis in an era when one had to devise such programs and deal with punched cards and voluminous printouts. So she was the one who brought this, this technology in data collection and used tape recorders to record the conversation between children and parents. And mind you, it was 1950s. Uh, in 1970s, she brought the first available video camera into homes and preschools to add patterns of activity and gauge directions to studies of language in discourse. So, you know, bringing in tape recording, tape recorders and tape recording the conversation of parents and children to videotaping the activities in school, preschool children, among preschool children was a huge uh, leap in integrating technology into research and Irvin Tripp was the very few researchers in the field who used technology so early and so effectively. She expanded her research to patterns of family interaction, peer play, humor, and politeness, and combining her concepts and concerns with the individual and the group. And that gave a new direction to research in social linguistics. Uh, all of these innovations led to new format for transcribing data of multi-personal interaction and this window into everyday communication contributed to the de development of a new field of social linguistics extending study of the adult child died to the family and extending dialogue to multi-party interactive discourse. Social linguistics went beyond parent-child dialogue into the pragmatics of communication and she published prolifically in this area as well. In 1975, Erwin Tripp secured a faculty position in psychology department. Among other honors, she received a Guggenheim Fellowship in 1974 and a Cattle Fellowship in psychology in 1985. She was also a dedicated research psychologist in the Institute of Human Development and the Institute of Cognitive and Brain Sciences. In 2000, she served as president of the International Pragmatic Association. So this, this is such an illustrious journey of uh, a psycholinguist. You call her a social linguist. You call her a psychologist you call her a cognitive psychologist or a person who was very uh, effectively and significantly contributing into gender issues and empowerment of women. 
if you look at major box because she has prolifically published in bilingualism in first or second language acquisition in the areas like psycholinguistics in the areas like social linguistics in the areas like pragmatics humor so a, a variety of work she carried out and very innovative in her data collection very innovative and in her transcription and analysis of the data very innovative in designing experiments uh, some of the major publications of suzanne erwin trip though the publication list is very long uh, a very few of them are mentioned here just to give a glimpse of a kind of work she did because more than 40 publications in uh, language acquisition alone more than 50 publications 60 publications in pragmatics alone so huge publication trajectory of erwin suzanne tramp but here suzanne erwin tramp uh, trip but here we will uh, refer to only select major works of erwin trip and uh, that is an analysis of the interaction of language topic and listener it was published in 1964 another major publication it's social linguistics advances in experimental social psychology that was published in 1969 on social linguistic rules alternations and co-occurrence directions in social linguistics published in 1972 a uh, yet another very effect, uh, important publication came in 1974 its second language learning like the first that was a major publication that had implications for further research and people uh, you know appreciated this work and she drew a lot of attention and uh, you know appreciation for that in 1976 very important publication it's said by the the structure of some american english detectives in 1977 another important work published named wait for me the roller skate it was a very deep account of child discourse in 1999 yet another effect important publication came out and that was the development of discourse marker in peer interaction and this list is not exhaustive she has more than 200 publications to her credit uh if you look at the honors she received awards she received fellowships she, re- she received this list is very long among them a few notable honors and fellowships she received was margaret floy washburn fellow in 1949-50 social science research council fellowship in 1953 to 1955 gaggenheim fellowship 1974-75 she was fellow of center for advanced studies in behavioral sciences from 1974 to 75 she received ns china delegation applied in applied linguistics 1977 us france scientific exchange fulbright fellow european science foundation project on second language in migrant workers in 1985-86 cattle fellowship in 1985-86 University of California Berkeley faculty research lecture in 1994 she became president of international pragmatic associations in 2000 these are some select honors she received in her career now we have been talking about bilingualism though we have a detailed video on bilingualism series of lectures on bilingualism you can go through those lectures to understand more on bilingualism but let me quickly uh, draw your attention towards this phenomena and also the two phenomena coordinate and compound bilingualism 
where Suzanne Irvin Tripp made a significant contribution. The basic idea I will just present in, in a, a very, very brief here. Bilingualism or more generally multilingualism, bi means two. So if the speaker has access to two linguistic codes, is the phenomenon of speaking and understanding two or more languages. The term can refer to individuals, individual bilingualism, as well as to the entire social group. It can be called social bilingualism. And Suzanne Irwin Tripp, while working on French bilingual adults, made a significant contribution in understanding the phenomena. And what is that phenomena? What is compound bilingualism? In compound bilinguals, two sets of linguistic codes are stored in one meaning unit. That is, they have one system of uh, meaning for words which is used for both L1 and L2. So, if you look at the semantic component of this, you hardly find any difference. So, in that sense, you know, this compound bilinguals have native like competence in both the languages where the semantic system is unified and one. So, they have for one concept, they have two different linguistic structures, two different words. So, words are different in two different codes, but the meaning or the semantic component remains the same. That is compound, Dif difficult to separate, right? So, they, they have, uh, they become native speaker of both the languages simultaneously. So, they, they have native like competence in both the languages where the meaning component is just composite and single and semantics component is single and they have uh, structures for two separate structures, one in L1, one in L2. So, uh, structurally they have two sets and semantically it is composite and one. So, that is compound bilingualism. If you look at coordinate bilingualism, in coordinate bilingualism, because this little delayed process of acquiring second language, by the time, uh, you know, partially the first language is developed. So, the sum, we do not see the simultaneity in acquisition process. So, the, so the semantic system is also different. So, two structures, two verbal repertoire and two semantic systems. So, in coordinate bilingual, bilinguals, each linguistic code is stored and organized separately in two meaning units and the bilinguals have two systems of meaning for words, that is one system of meaning is for words that individual know in L1 and the other system of meaning is there for words they know in L2. So, that is the distinction between uh, compound and coordinate bilingualism. In compound bilingualism, you have single meaning unit. In coordinate bilingualism, you have two separate units of meaning. So, in compound bilingualism, you have one meaning with two separate words, one in L1, one in L2. In coordinate bilingualism, you have two components of meaning units, a set of words in L1 and one meaning unit a set of words in L2 and another meaning unit. So, this is the basic concept, but Suzanne Irwin Tripp uh, made a huge contribution in understanding this concept and in the context of, uh, you know, uh, intercultural context, she described this phenomena, specifically working on French bilinguals and uh, Japanese war brides, lots of other things she also highlighted and brought into notice. If I quote her 1968 March statement in one of her publications, uh, the entire proposition is directly quoted from her work and I will quote it for you. 
uh, I quote, a bilingual in process could be a child growing up in a bilingual adult milieu. She's talking about a growth of language and, and linguistic structures among bilingual children. And she is comparing it with that of the adults. Uh, I quote, a bilingual in process could be a child growing up in bilingual adult milieu or an adult who has moved to a different linguistic milieu. The learning process might be casual exposure or systematic pedagogy. There is strong evidence that for children under 11 years of age, she is referring to, language is sound and for adults it is sense. Children attend more to the surface just as they also connect speech more to the immediate situation in which it occurs. For adults, language is transparent since adults rapidly penetrate the surface of an utterance to its meaning to a network of connected thoughts. The basis for this difference between children and adult is unknown. If the difference is neurological or lies in the loss of an ability, children must be exposed to different teaching methods than adults since their abilities differ. If the difference in behavior is a consequence of shift of set or attention or the result of adults' greater richness and skill in semantic association, the pedagogical implications are quite different. This is what she talks about while talking about becoming a bilingual. bilingual. If you look at the contribution of Suzanne Irwin Tripp in shaping this discipline, it dates back to early 50s and continues up to 21st century. So, late mid, mid of 19th, uh, 20th century to early 21st century, almost like you know, uh, six decades of dedicated research and work in the fields of psycholinguistics, social linguistics. Uh, pragmatics and specifically uh, bilingual children and uh, bilingual adults. So, the reason for bringing in Suzanne Irwin Tripp to this fold, uh, you know, which is of a galaxy of scholars who shaped the discipline, is the rich trajectory of her research that contributed in understanding major themes uh, in, on the interface of psychology and linguistics. So she is sociologist in her uh, social linguist as well as a psycholinguist in her own right. We will continue our discussion on other scholars and researchers and contributors who contributed in shaping this discipline in our subsequent lectures and videos. So keep tuned in. And this is it for now. Thank you very much.